You know, talking about video games has never been harder than it is in today's day and age, just mainly due to the fact that, honestly, video games nowadays will ship in a completely, completely disastrous state with tons and tons of bugs and problems. And then, of course, over time, if you have a good developer, they will over time improve the title and make it manageable. Or in some cases, like, for example, No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk, we actually end up with a pretty stellar game. Now, why would that be a problem? Well, mainly because of the fact that obviously, if let's say I play a game like Cyberpunk at launch, and that's my only experience with the game, and you played it after it's already been patched and it has a very different experience, we're not really almost talking about the exact same product. And that is most definitely true for the subject matter at hand today, and that would be the Gotham Knight. Yes, I have played everything when it comes to the Gotham Knights. That means I've played the main story. Yes, that means I've played the main story on New Game Plus all the way through. And yes, I even played every single Heroic Assault mission all the way through. All of them. Now, keep in mind, once again, when I bring this up, I did play the game originally at launch, which means I do have a pretty good experience with the broken version of Gotham Knights, where I, just like most people, I would say the majority of people that played Gotham Knights experienced a lot of issues, particularly a lot of frame drops, a lot of problems, specifically when it comes to utilizing the bat cycle. But what is equally true is that I have also played the most current version of Gotham Knights, the one that actually runs quite smoothly, at least in my experience on the PlayStation 5, from launch day to the version that you would play right now, it is legitimately night and day. I have not seen any sort of egregious problems or hiccups in the way that the game runs like I used to back when the game just launched. So where does this game land? Well, for me personally, I would probably say that it is mid or honestly, after all the patches and the updates that they've done, I would maybe even push it up to that upper mid class level. Now, when I say this, there will definitely be people that will interpret this in one of two ways. One camp will say, oh, well, what he's saying is that the game is trash, because of course, if a game is average or even upper average, it means that it's garbage because that's how we operate nowadays. There is no room for nuance and there is no games that could just be good, not great or excellent, but just simply good. And then on the flip side of that, some people will hear me say this and say, oh, well, what he's saying is that this game is phenomenal. And that is absolutely not what I'm saying. The game legitimately is average. It is impossible for me to completely forget the issues that the game used to have. It would be disingenuous and unfair to pretend like those never actually happened because they were there. They were present at launch. Yes, I understand that the person who's buying Gotham Knights right now in 2023 will probably have a very substantially different experience than the person who bought Gotham Knights back when the game launched. But pretending like I didn't experience the launch version of this game would be completely disingenuous. So I will always have a little bit of a negative slight towards this game just on that basis alone. But don't get me wrong, I've been really focused on the technical side of things. That's not really all the problems that I have with the title. Like for example, the story, it's just fine. It's really not all that exciting. Don't get me wrong, there are really, really wonderful moments where we see great camaraderie between the Gotham Knights themselves, and I've actually really enjoyed some of the dialogue that was written in the scenes between the Gotham Knights interacting with Alfred inside the Belfry. Those were really kind of the highlights of the story, but the main story itself feels very surface level, and honestly, the utilization of Bruce Wayne in the story as Batman as a whole just felt like they were just utilizing the name as a token placement and didn't have any sort of actual reverence for the character or actual ideas when it comes to what they were going to do with the character. Next, let's talk about the gameplay side of things. The gameplay in the game is actually pretty decent. Again, not great, but not terrible. I genuinely feel like there were times when I was playing particularly as, let's say, Red Hood, or when I was playing as Batgirl, I really felt like the gameplay was super intuitive and very, very fluid. However, of course, initially when the game just launched, there were a lot of technical problems that would inhibit that from happening sometimes with frame stuttering or just weird animation glitches that would happen that kind of ruined the experience. Since then, a lot of that has been addressed and the game does run smoother on that front, which obviously helps the intuitive combat to feel actually intuitive. 
Now you'll notice that I obviously specifically highlighted Red Hood and Batgirl. I do feel like they are kind of the two standout characters in terms of how they actually play and their abilities. Whereas Robin and Nightwing felt a little bit more generic to me personally. I do feel like they have really good utility in terms of being able to do heroic assault missions and bringing them along with teammates on your team. But beyond that, they really don't seem like really fun characters. I don't really see myself or any of my friends ever jump to play as either one of those two, whereas Red Hood and Batgirl are definitely favorites. Now, of course, in any superhero game, we always focus a lot on the villains. And that's one of the things that in this game was kind of odd because I feel like the villains themselves weren't done particularly well. However, the boss fights were. I really liked the distinct experience that I had with each one of the villains. The fight with Harley felt different than the fight with Mr. Freeze and his giant tentacle robot monster thing. And definitely my favorite was Clayface. I thought that one was really, really cool. The only problem is that that's pretty much your three main boss fights. Yes, you do fight Talia at some point, but that feels like the most generic of the fights by far, which is kind of a bummer considering that that is your main big boss fight that you build to. And really one of the things that really feels like a huge omission here is that we just simply needed some more villains. I felt like Penguin was a really great character from a writing standpoint and voice acting standpoint. However, the problem is we didn't actually get to see a proper boss fight with the Penguin. That would have been something that I would have loved to see. I would have loved to see Penguin highlighted in some sort of a unique, maybe even a comedy relief type boss fight, but a boss fight nevertheless. And yes, I'm aware that some of you guys are probably rushing over to the comments right now to say that the DLC for the game has attempted to make more boss fights available via the showdown mode and the heroic assault missions that feature basically variants of the exact same boss fights that we've already gone through. But to me personally, taking existing boss fights and basically cranking them up to a harder difficulty or creating boss fights where essentially it's the boss fights teaming up together at the same time to fight you, that's not really a new boss fight. That's just basically repackaging an existing experience. And speaking of the game's additional content or DLC, many have described it as better than nothing, especially because it's all been free, wow. which I do admire. And I think that that's definitely a very, very cool move that they've kept all the DLC for the game so far free. So it feels like anyone can dive in should they choose to do so. However, as sad as it sounds, that is sort of the vibe that it gives off. It really is just simply better than nothing. First, I want to stress that I purposefully played some of the DLC by myself as a solo player and most with friends in order to get an idea of what both experiences are like. And I have to say, I've never played a game where the experience had such a stark difference. When I played or should I say attempted to play through some of the heroic assault missions as a solo player, I found them nearly unplayable. They were genuinely so frustrating. At times, it felt impossible to complete and just plain cruel. However, jumping over into multiplayer, they were actually a blast. And I had fun teaming up with friends and running through the challenging floors while we all picked our favorite knight and we tried to combo around our abilities to get the best results possible. And so I guess ultimately what I'm saying is that your mileage may vary when it comes to the DLC. It really depends on whether or not you're gonna be playing it solo, or if you're going to actually play it with some friends, which I think will make the experience far superior. And so to summarize, all in all, I feel like at this point in time, which is around the midway point of 2023, I feel like you can add this one to your collection, which I know sounds kind of controversial because a lot of people like to harp on how bad this game is. But considering the fact that you can add this one to your collection for around $30 quite regularly for even the more fancy versions of this game. And I've seen it sold for as low as $10 at actual GameStop stores. So if you keep on the lookout, I'm sure that you could get a really, really good deal for this one. And especially if you have a few friends to tag along with you for the heroic assault missions, I think that you will genuinely enjoy your time with the game and you will find that the game actually does at this point in time have a lot more good than bad 
in this experience. So there you go, guys. That's my experience with Gotham Knights. What was your experience like with this title? Let me know down in the comment section below. Did you actually play the game? And if so, did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? I would definitely love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below. And of course, in addition to that, I would love to thank you guys so very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And I'll most definitely catch you guys here on the next one. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Peace out. See you later. Alligators.